Well, the South African Human Rights Commission launched a national investigative hearing series into the violence in Guazul Natal and Gauteng last year. It's now concluded the hearings, but we're yet to hear what the findings of that process have been. Let's speak with Fatima Cohen, the Deputy Chairperson at the Human Rights Commission. Good to have you on the program today, ma'am. I know that the report you've said is due out imminently. Any idea at this point how imminent that will be? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, the the report uh, uh, will not surface anytime soon. Uh, we have just concluded the phase of oral hearings and in-person hearings. Uh, we've received uh, several hundred submissions, uh, which are written submissions, and these uh, have yet to be processed. Um, and we expect, however, uh, to be working quite tirelessly on um, issuing the report hopefully before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Without then preempting what is going to be in the report, the Human Rights Commission has, as you said, spent a lot of time hearing oral evidence from the likes of the police minister, the former state security minister, and other people who lived through the horrors of July 2021. Where do you stand as a commission in your understanding of that period, the devastating period in South Africa's modern history? Uh, you're quite right to characterize it as a devastating period in our history. And uh, as the Human Rights Commission, we treated it as such. And our approach has been to look backwards. In other words, the investigation is a mechanism that we use to reflect on what happened um, in the past, as it were. But we're also concerned about the future. Uh, the one thing that I think we must all recognize is that regardless of who uh, orchestrated uh, the violence in KZN particularly, but also in Gauteng, and attempted to do so throughout the country, uh, found uh, fertile ground uh, in our communities, in people, ordinary people who have no interest in politics, who have no interest in, uh, you know, public affairs, uh, who have no other motive other than uh, to participate uh, in the unrest. Um, and, and, and this fertile ground, tinderbox, uh, set of circumstances uh, which we've identified as being characterized by poverty, social stresses, coupled with a very toxic culture of violence in our communities, lawlessness, and even a growing sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. um, these pertain in very many communities uh, throughout our country. And our concern, therefore, is that there is the potential in the future uh, for similar uprisings, uh, given the set of circumstances in our various communities. Is there a fast um, enough response, our, though, to that set of circumstances, which you say makes the country so vulnerable to a potential repeat soon or later down the line? Well, I think when you talk about responses, you, you're suggesting that it would be responses by the state. Um, and our view is that we should, all of us, uh, people living in South Africa, take some responsibility for the state of affairs that pertain in our midst. Um, that ultimately we can't wait for a Messiah to deliver us from our current trajectory, uh, which is bordering on lawlessness. Um, and we must therefore be making some kind of effort and directing our energies towards rectifying uh, what has gone wrong. The first step, of course, is identifying what it is that leads to this kind of uprising and uh, devastating destruction. And we were listening earlier to a briefing by ministers from the security cluster, and they focused, of course, as per their job, on the arrests of suspects, the sharing of intelligence, and aspects, or rather that aspect of the response, and preventing a repeat. But I wonder if there's enough of a focus on, or a blend, in fact, between the legal and the social, as you suggest. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is where we come in, you know, we have to shine a light uh, on, on the other aspects. Yes, certainly 
uh, the security cluster ministers uh, have a job to do, and, and that job is, is, is quite a, a huge job in the sense that we have all seen uh, the lackluster performance of uh, the security apparatus uh, was laid bare, you know, during the, the unrest. Uh, and so they have their jobs cut out for them, and, and this is a very important job. Uh, uh, any constitutional democracy uh, worth its salt must have uh, in its arsenal a very efficient and very uh, capable uh, secu security uh, uh, apparatus. Uh, that being said, of course, um, the issue of the social stresses that exist in our midst is something that we, as the South African Human Rights Commission, would want uh, there to be some focus on. We would, uh, of course, as part and parcel of the solutions, uh, we hope that government realizes that uh, when it comes to social economic rights, that there needs to be a sharper focus uh, in their policy and in their deliverables with regard to this. This would help a great deal. But that's not all it is. I mean, I think that part of the problem with South Africa at the moment, uh, of course, is uh, that it is characterized by huge distrust. Distrust uh, of um, uh, the political structures, distrust of each other, uh, racial distrust even. Uh, and there's growing uh, polarization of the races in our country at the moment. Uh, and certainly the July events uh, last year have taken us backward uh, in those affected mm. communities. And this is something that we hope to focus on uh, with our social harmony national effort, uh, which we will be, uh, details of which we will announce shortly. So if indeed, as you say, there's been a loss of trust in government's ability to address the various challenges in this country, who should lead the process going forward? Is that where uh, civic organizations are supposed to come in? Look, I, I'm not suggesting that the, that the lack of trust uh, is, is real. In, in many respects, there are uh, very capable elements within the state that still function very well. And I think we just need those to come to the fore more. Uh, our, our view is that uh, we can certainly, each of us, lead in our own spaces. Uh, we very often, as South Africans, tend to look beyond ourselves. Uh, for solutions, and I think the solutions do lie very much uh, in our own homes, in our own communities, in the spaces that we operate in. Mm -hmm. And this is really the uh, essence of what we are constructing uh, for the national effort, uh, which we hope to launch next year. It's very much focused on individuals and their ability to, um, to change things in, in our midst. Fatima Chowan from the Human Rights Commission, where she's Deputy Chairperson. Good to have your time, ma'am. Thank you.